Good afternoon, friends. This is Dr. Bharti Garg from the Department of Public Administration, Punjab University, Chandigarh. Today, we are going to discuss the topic of All India Services, their role and rationale, Central Civil Services, and State Civil Services. At the end of this module, friends, you will be able to understand the structure of civil services in India, their importance in Indian administration, the role of All India Services. Central Civil Services and State Civil Services in India. Now, giving an introduction and starting with the lecture, firstly, I would like to introduce you with the structure of the state. Every state has three wings: legislature, executive, and judiciary. In India, we have a parliamentary system of governance where the political executive is responsible to the legislature. legislature is responsible for policy making and political executive through the class of civil servants who are the permanent executive is responsible for the implementation of the policies now the implementation aspect of the policies for this it is clearly accountable to the legislature so policy making which is the role of legislature the implementation of those policies lies with the political executive through the permanent executive that is the civil service so civil services they play a very important role in the implementation of the policies the success or failure of any policy lies in the hands of civil services the importance of civil services was recognized well in time by our constitution makers and thus civil services have been accorded a constitutional status in our constitution from article 308 to 322 which talks about the union services that is the all india services and central services as well as about the state civil services friends we are going to discuss the genesis of modern civil services in india the landmark year is 1854 in 1854 lord macaulay set up the modern civil service in india it recommended that the modern civil service in india be recruited through open competitive examination based on merit system In 1887, HSN Commission, Commission divided the civil services into three services: that is, imperial, provincial, and subordinate civil services. In 1919, under the Government of India Act 1919, the imperial services were divided into two: that is, All India Services and Central Civil Services. From 1930 onwards, civil services in India were governed by Civil Services Classification Control and Appeal Rules 1930 Various services were divided into four categories that is class 1 class 2 subordinate and inferior services During British era another classification came into being that is the gazetted services and non gazetted services The difference between the two was that the officers of the gazetted services their names were registered in the government gazette and the officers who belong to non gazetted services their names were not registered in the gazetted in the gazette of the government of india so this classification prevails even today that is of gazetted officers and non gazetted officers friends the adjoining picture in this slide shows the composition of ics officers now ics was the elite service in india which after independence became ias that is indian administrative service but as you can see in this slide the ics officer which was very elite in uh, nature it had almost britishers and the process of recruitment was racist in nature means britishers were given prominence in the recruitment than indians but slowly as you see we moved on and at the time of independence we have more of indians in the service than the britishers in the service after independence also we continued with the same rules that is civil services were governed by civil service classification control and appeal rules of 1930 but they were amended from time to time from 1970s onwards the civil services were grouped into group a group b group c and group d so since the sixth pay commission report the classification was into groups a b and c Now friends we are going to discuss the classification of civil services in India. Now as this slide shows the civil services are divided into three categories all india services central civil services and state civil services. Now these three services out of these three services all india services and central civil services they cater to the union government and the state civil services are the exclusive of the state government. 
Now, central civil servants, they cater to the subjects which are in the union list. State civil service cater to the subjects in the state list. And all India service officers, they are appointed in the states. So, in a way, they implement the state subjects, but they are accountable to the union government also along with the state governments. So, friends, now we are going to discuss these services in little detail. Now, all, firstly, we are going to take up all India services. All India services are common to both union and the states and they are set up as per the provision included in article 312 of the Indian constitution. We have in India three all India services that is IAS Indian administrative service, second is IPS Indian police service and third is Indian forest service IFS. The second category of services is the central civil services. The officers of the central civil services, they cater to the subjects included in the union list. So they are officers of the union government. And for example, the officers of Indian Audit and Account Services, Indian Foreign Service. So these officers, they work under the exclusive control and domain of the union government. The third category is of state civil services. Now the officers of the state civil services, they are exclusively under the control of the state government and administer subjects which are assigned to the state government under the state list of the constitution. So they are officers of the state government. For example, in Punjab, we have PCS officers, in Haryana, we have HCS officers and so on. The central and state civil services can also be classified as group A, B and C services with group A services holding a higher rank and stature. All India service officers are all group A service officers. So in a nutshell, the civil services in India are classified as all India services, which are three in number, IAS, IPS, IFS. They are all group A services, central civil services, which are classified into group A, B and C, and state civil services, which are again classified into group A, B and C. Here we have an illustrative classification of services. Friends, as we can see, the All India Service here is a Group A service. We have three All India Service, IS, IPS and IFS. IS is a General Management Service, IPS is a Specialized Service and Indian Forest Service is a Technical Service. In the Central Services Group A, we have no General Management Service. We have only Technical Services and Specialized Services. And in the group B central services, we have all the three categories of services that is general management service, specialized service and technical services. Apart from that, we have multitasking services which exist in all general and functional management areas. Now friends, we are going to discuss in detail the All India Services that is the most important service. Uh, Article 312 of the Indian Constitution provides for the method of the creation of the All India Services. As discussed earlier, we have three All India Services in our country, IS, IPS and IFS. The officers of All India Services, they serve both the union government as well as the state government. Now, this slide shows the logo or logos of all the three officers, IS, IPS and IFS officers. All India Service Rules 1951 provides that the union government in consultation with the state government can make rules regulating the recruitment and conditions of service of the All India Services. Now, since it provides that the union government can consult the state government while framing rules for the regulation of the recruitment and conditions of service of the civil services of All India Services, so it shows that officers of All India Service, they serve the union government as well as the state government equally. Now, we are going to discuss the objectives behind the creation of All India Services. As we have discussed that the officers of All India Services serve both the union and the state government. So the government wanted to have a class of officers which are acting as a link between the union government as well as the state government. So the very first objective behind the creation of All India Services is to have liaison between the union government and the state government. The officers of the All India Services since they serve both the union government and the state government. So they act as a coordinating link between the union government and the state government by putting forward the views of the state government to the union government and views and arguments of the union government towards the state government. The second objective behind the creation of the All India Services is to ensure uniformity of administration in the country. 
we have a uniform pattern of all india services in the entire country every state has a class of all india service officers so and they serve both the union government as well as the state government so there is a uniformity of administrative structure in the whole country despite the fact that all the states are different and there are different state governments we have a class of all india service officers who have a uniformity in structure and st structure and functioning of administration the third objective behind the creation of the all india services is to have a close link between the union government and the state government this ensures that the administration at the union level will remain in touch with the ground realities in the states through all india service officers now since all india service officers they act as a coordinating link between the union government and the state government so the union government remains in touch with the ground realities existing in the states which thus facilitate in formulating better plans and policies for the state government it is not just the union government that remains in touch with the ground realities in the states but on the other hand through the class of all india service officers state administrations also develop wider perspective and it helps in getting them best possible officers for its senior positions since these officers act as a liaison link between the union government and the state governments and they are the coordinating links between the two so state governments can also understand the realities of the union government by what are the constraints of the union government how it functions rather than just imposing its will so it also helps the state government in getting better funds and putting forward its views and in fact it also helps the state government in having a wider outlook with regard to the working of the union government moreover the creation of all india services helps in lesser political interference in recruitment and control of the officers since all india service officers they serve both the union and the state government and they are accountable more to the union government than to the state government so their recruitment and terms and conditions of service are guided by union government rules so political interference at the state level is less with regard to the functioning of the all india service officers now we are going to discuss the role and rationale of all india services the first point in this is national outlook it is believed that officers of all india services have a national outlook since officers of all india services they are drawn from the entire country they have different backgrounds either from humanities social sciences medical or engineering and the training which they get imparts a national outlook in their functioning so since they have developed a national wider outlook it is believed that that they are best suited to serve both the union government as well as the state governments the second rationale of all india services is that they play a leadership role now since the officers of all india services they serve different positions they serve different departments they work on different positions they carry out large number of activities so they are trained to undertake various leadership positions and perform leadership roles thus they are trained in multitasking they develop expertise in different areas and they are in a position to lead different departments third rationale is proven ability and wide experience now since these officers they serve different positions and different departments of the government of india as well as state governments so these officers have proven ability and leadership experience talent to serve the government and in different positions different departments and give their best to the government next rationale is unifying force the officers of these services they are the unifying force in the country they are important today also as they were important when india got independence and the constitution was framed since there are a link between the union government and the state government and they serve both the union government and the state government they act as a unifying force between the central government and the state government especially in light of the various specific tendencies prevailing in the country next rationale is that they are the link between the union government and the state government now as we have been discussing this point they are the major unifying force they are the major link between the union government and the state government especially when the party ruling at the center is different from the party ruling in the states since it is believed that all india service officers they are not guided by any ideologies and they are actually officers which are to serve both the center and the states 
Im, in an impartial manner so they are actually a link a true link between the union government and the state government now friends considering the importance of the nature of all india services in india the government of india celebrates all india service day on april 20 and 21st and 10th all india service day was celebrated on april 20 21st 2016 adjoining is a part which shows what are the all marks of all india services in india if you can clearly make out there is a permanency in the services the civil servants are given constitutional protection then there is they work on the principles of political neutrality and anonymity and the officers of the civil services they are recruited on the basis of merit by independent constitutional authorities that is union public service commission and state public service commissions Now, friends, we are going to discuss the nature of all India services. The first point that comes up is that they are the instruments which maintain national consolidation and unity in the country. They ensure maintenance of common minimum standards in certain areas of administration all over the country. All India services ensures the existence of class of officers who are free, independent, having a national outlook, and they serve the states. so states are not confined to their narrow perspective but they even they develop a wide national perspective with this class of officers all india service is a union subject the all india civil service rules 1951 provides that the union government in consultation with the state government can make rules and regulations for the conduct and conditions of service of the officers of this service thus it is the union government which has the responsibility to frame rules and regulations with regard to this service the power to impose penalties on the officers of the all india services like retirement removal or dismissal it lies with the union government in consultation with the union public service commission now friends we have seen that all india service officers they are very important in the functioning of the administration of the entire country and all india service officers they have been serving both the union government and the state government but of lately certain negative trends have been observed in the functioning of all india services and first such negative trend is the unhealthy nexus between the officials of all india services and politicians and this unhealthy nexus has become a breeding ground for corruption in india and civil servants they tow the unhealthy and unrequired demands of the political class in trying to get plump postings so this unhealthy nexus has worked against transparent corruption free and rational administration in the country another important negative trend noticed in the functioning of all india service officers is that they are wary of taking bold decisions now various vigilance organizations like central bureau of investigation or audit organization like cagi they have created a kind of fear psychosis amongst the officers and because of various audit objections or vigilance mechanisms that have been devised the officers are not taking any bold decisions which require risk taking and the fear being questioned by various organizations like cagi and central bureau of investigation which is going against the functioning of administration in india the third unhealthy trend noticed is the sectarian divide amongst the officers of all india services and it has been found that officials at the highest levels in the indian administrative service indian police and forest service they are divided along sectarian lines and they have been found promoting their own vested sectarian interests rather than working in the interest of the entire society there is a problem of corruption that has crept into the functioning of the officers of all india services now this corruption that has crept into the system is very unhealthy and it has emerged because of various reasons like unhealthy nexus between the politicians and the bureaucrats and non transparent functioning of the administration and there are these practices have marred the functioning of administration at various levels it is said that civil services in india it has lost its anonymous and neutral character and these corrupt practices have become prevalent at all levels of administration next negative trend being noticed in the functioning of the all india service officers is inappropriate decision making it is said that these officers they make centralized planning they are far away from the ground realities 
so the decisions which they take they'll take those decisions while sitting in ivory towers which are not catering to the actual needs of the population which is deprived of the benefits so their decisions are more highly centralized lacking any teeth and lacking any potential not catering to the real needs of the people another negative trend noticed it is that the civil servants of all india services are not secure about their tenure since they are not secure about their tenure so they are not able to function effectively their tenure has largely been dependent on the whims and fancies of their political masters they don't know when they'll be transferred from one position to another position thus their work is hampered and their efficiency is strictly affected by this now friends we have till this point discussed about all india services now we are going to discuss about the central civil services now central civil service officers they serve the union government and administer subjects which are under the exclusive domain of the union list included in the 7th schedule of the indian constitution the central civil service officers they are categorized in different ways one such categorization is into group a b and c the second classification is into non technical services technical services which includes engineering and health services other services which includes some of the engineering and health services and central secretariat services now we are going to discuss in detail about the central civil services firstly let us take up central civil services group a now the recruitment to the central civil service group a b non technical services is done by union public service commission through the common entrance exam which is conducted along with the recruitment of the all india services separate examination is conducted by upsc for the technical services of health engineering biotechnology etc the most important central service group b is the central secretariat service and these are also gazetted positions third category is central services group c it's a non gazetted service and the recruitment to this is done by staff selection commission for example central secretariat clerical service now friends we are going to discuss the third category of services state civil services now the officers of the state civil service that administers subjects which are under the exclusive domain of the state government and are included in the state list of the 7th schedule of the indian constitution like agriculture health etc the duties of the officers of the state civil services are confined to the territorial boundaries of the state unless they are working on deputation for the central government According to article 309 of the Indian Constitution the recruitment and service conditions of the officers of the state civil services they are guided by the acts of the respective state legislature According to article 310 of the Indian Constitution the members of the state civil service hold office during the pleasure of the governor of the state The provisions for safeguarding the interests of the state civil service officers are given in article 311 of the Indian Constitution friends now let us take up the classification of state civil services state civil services are classified as group a b and c services apart from this they are also classified as gazetted and non gazetted services gazetted services are those who are included in the government gazette and non gazetted services are those which are not included in the government gazette apart from that the civil services in the states are also classified as subordinate services and ministerial services now we have till this point discussed the classification of services in india as all india services central services and state civil services we have discussed that upsc conducts recruitment for the all india services and you know central civil services and state public service commission conducts recruitment for the state civil services but there is a procedure for the induction of the officers of the state civil services into all india services and that is based on the formula 1 is to 3 that is 33% of the positions in the ias ips and ifs are filled from the state civil services through the process of promotion now we are going to discuss the recruitment into the state civil services every state has a state public service commission and every state public service commission conducts examination for recruitment into the state civil services recruitment is done both through 
direct recruitment process as well as through indirect recruitment process. Now, the categories of state civil services for which direct recruitment is undertaken is state administrative service, BDPO, Tehsildar, Talukta, state police service, etc. And any other class 1 or class 2 service which is notified by the state government can also be recruited through direct recruitment process. Now, there are various key issues which require reform with regard to the functioning of the civil services in India. For example, reforms are required with regard to the structure of the civil services, their classification pattern, their recruitment pattern, their promotion pattern, capacity building pattern, with regard to inculcating professional skills amongst the civil servants, developing modernity and ensuring political, judicial, financial, economic accountability and above all, the civil servants must know, must be aware of the fact that they are accountable to people at large. So these are the reform issues which must be included in the functioning of the civil services because we have found that over these decades after independence, civil services have been mired into various controversies and they have forgotten about various accountability mechanisms. So we must ensure that these reforms are introduced at the earliest in the functioning of civil services. Various attempts have been made with regard to reforming the civil services in India. In line of these attempts, the government of India has set up various commissions and committees and the most important committee set up was the Santhanam committee in 1964. Now this committee has given suggestions with regard to the conduct of civil servants while filing their income tax assets and taking gifts and it has also suggested changes in Article 311 of the Constitution while taking disciplinary action against the civil servants. The second most important committee set up was the Huta Committee in the year 2004. This committee had recommended amendments in the Prevention of Corruption Act to safeguard the honest civil servants, enactment of the Code of Conduct for the civil servants, Code of Ethics for the civil servants and Code of Governance for the civil servants. The latest in line of the reforms is the second ARC report which was given by the Administrative Reforms Commission. Now this commission had given very wide ranging strong recommendations of intensive performance review of the officers. It had suggested intensive performance review of the officers at two stages, one after 14 years of service and second after 20 years of service. It had suggested that uh, those officers who are unfit to continue in their jobs, their, their jobs should be discarded and the initial appointment should only be made for 20 years. After 20 years, when their performance is reviewed, if they are fit to continue, only then their jobs will continue, otherwise they will be given compulsory retirement. So friends, to conclude, I would say that we have discussed the classification of civil services in India, which is a three-tier classification into All India Services central services and state civil services. We have discussed that all India service officers, they are group A service officers, central and state service officers are group A, B and C service officers. We have seen that how all India service officers have been serving both the union government and the state government, central civil service officers, they serve the union government and the state civil service officers serve the state government exclusively. All these services are the strong pillars of the administrative system of the country with all India service officers serving both the union and the state government. It is said that though all India service officers are all India in character, but if we see the actual functioning of the services, central civil service officers, they, are, they have a wider all India character than all India service officers because they serve the entire country under the union government. They go and serve all the departments of the union government which are located in the states. Thank you.